I've made mention, this isn't what Paul was talking about here, but me and Sister uh, Fleming was talking one time, and uh, we began to talk about people wanting to be free of, of rules and regulations. And uh, I told her, I said, you know, I've seen people that would take and want to be free of rules and regulations, and I've seen people say, well, I want to back up, and I'm not going to do that, and because this is what we've always had to do, we're not going to do that no more. And they established a rule that we're not going to do that, and all of a sudden they've become under the same bondage that they were trying to run from. And as I was telling her that, she looked at me in a big, a big shock look on her face. And Sister Flemings looked at me and said, she said, no, we've been to a church like that. She said, we went to church one, to one place and we was preaching a revival. And when I walked in, she said, I, I didn't understand what was taking place at the time. But now I understand. She said, I walked in with my dress on. And when I walked in with my dress, one lady looked at me and said, what are you doing in here with a dress? We don't wear dresses in here. And she said, I understand now. They were trying to be free from something, and in the process of it, they set up a rule, and they're still under the same bondage that they were running from. I want you to know tonight that whenever you... Brother Moon brought out so wonderfully that Sunday morning that the difference between law and grace is under law you done it because you had to. Under grace you do it because you want to. And until people understand that, as long as they're still doing it because they have to, they're still in bondage. But when people start doing things because they want to, they are free from that bondage. And they come in and and uh, spy out their liberty which they had in Christ that they might bring them into bondage. The bondage that they was going to want to bring them back under was this bondage of circumcision or the law. They wanted, as Paul went out and began to preach to the Gentiles, they wanted him to bring them under the bondage of the law, which they wasn't able to live by their own selves. Now, I don't know about you, but as I begin to read this, Paul is saying, now then, Peter's not the only one in that top position. Peter was given this message to take to those that were under the law. But God has put me in the same position as Peter to the Gentiles. Now, I know oftentimes we put Peter at that number one spot and certainly and probably that's a, a downhill stuff that we've hung on to some tradition that maybe we've held on to that's drifted into the church from the Roman Catholic Church because Peter is in the number one position but Paul is saying that the same thing that was given to Peter for the old covenant Jews and those under the law the same thing was given to me for those that were not under the law. And I don't know that maybe us as the Gentiles shouldn't be taken and, and looking at Paul and, and he ought to be saying, man, let's take and think about Paul a while. Let's think about Paul a while because he was the one that was in the position to take and bring us into this new covenant church. When Peter come to Antioch, Paul stood and faced him face to face. As we went through the Gospels, we found that Peter messed up probably more than anybody. And we put him high up on the pedestal. And we think certainly after his last mess up of denying Jesus Christ, certainly Peter has learned his lessons and, and he's not going to make any more mistakes. You ever felt like that maybe you, this is your last mistake and you'll not make any more mistakes after that? And here we are all the way over to Galatians.
Galatians, and now Peter has messed up again. He was eating with the Gentiles, and when the Jews began to come around, he got caught up in their indignation. You can remember back in school, maybe. Maybe there was a child that, that was in your grade or a grade below, above or a grade below, and, and people were making fun of them, and, and you didn't like the way people made fun of them. But how many of us, when everybody came around and started making fun of them, even though we didn't like it, they were making fun of them, maybe we got caught up in making fun of them too or get, trying to be on the side of the people making fun because... We didn't want to be frowned down upon or excluded from the circle. It's easy to get caught up in something. It's called peer pressure. And as I've made mention, kids may think it's something new today, peer pressure, but peer pressure has always been around. And what Peter got caught up in was peer pressure. When the Jews, those of the circumcision begin to come around, they're high-nosed. Got to be this certain way. Unloving attitude. People that simply just spoke their mind. And when they come around, Peter got caught up in that attitude. I want you to know today that the most important thing about our walk with God, the most important thing is our attitude. He got caught up in the fear of them which were of the circumcision. And Paul had to come in and say, well, Peter, you've messed up. You're wrong. You're wrong. Don't get caught up. And forget what love is all about. Don't think that you're better than what they are. I read a story one time of, of a young man that come to church. and He was all filthy and stunk, hadn't had a bath in a long time. and He walked into this big church and and as he walked in, he kept looking, and there wasn't no place to seat. The place was, was full. And he kept walking further to the front and further to the front. And finally, when he got to the very front of the church, he looked around, and even the front pew was full of people. And nobody would scoot over to make room for this young man because he smelled bad and looked bad. And finally, the young man just sat there on the floor to listen to the preacher preach the word. When finally a little old man from a few pews back sat there and watched for a while and finally this gentleman, God began to work on his heart and he got up and everybody watched this old man as he walked to the front because they figured he was fixing to tell this young man to take and get his stuff and head back out. So they were all anxiously awaiting to see what was fixing to transpire and take place in this situation when the old man come up and sat down on the floor beside the young man. What Paul would have done at this time would have asked the young man to leave. And Paul said, you're wrong. You need to come up from the pew you're sitting on and make this young man feel at home. He got caught up in all the nice clothes, in all the fancy puff, and forgot that the real reason of our ministry is love. Amen. 